This is the Red House. It's in a very tranquil spot, a little bit out of the town centre, on the edge of the golf course, and it's where Piers and Britain moved in 1957. It's a beautiful 17th century farmhouse, made of red Suffolk brick, and the main house is surrounded by outbuildings which were gradually converted for Britain and Piers' use. One of them housed his studio, it was an old hay buyer. One of them was a cow shed which became their library. I've stepped in through the front door and into the entrance hall. It looks as though Britain and Piers have just gone out for a walk. There's a, a hat stand and a coat draped over it and a number of walking sticks and an empty dog basket where Britain's dachshunds would have curled up and gone to sleep. Britain was very keen to keep a distinction between his home life and his work life, and one of the attractions of moving to the Red House was the fact that he could have a purpose-built studio where he could bang away to his heart's content, as he put it. And he'd step out, walk across the terrace here, into the studio, and then he could focus entirely on his work, and at the end of his composing time, he would come back out make the transition and shut the door behind him as he headed back into the house, leaving his work behind him. Britain's grand piano, a Steinway C, takes pride of place in the studio. He wrote just one solo piano work here, a notturno, a night piece. The piano is draped with a blue cloth. There are a couple of colourful Turkish rugs on the floor and on the other side is his desk and this is where he sketched out many works including his war requiem. Again there's all sorts of paraphernalia surrounding his large sheets of manuscript paper. There's uh, some books stacked up including some Elizabethan lyrics. There's a, a plastic magnifying glass. There's a paperweight a duck paperweight, a brass one, and a sculpture of a boy holding hands with a, a much younger infant. It's a deep desk. It's covered with cloth of pale green fabric. And there's a very high stool drawn up to it, the kind of stool that apparently coffins were once rested on. And you wonder how Britain had room to tuck his knees under the desk. And on the bookcase on the right-hand side is a photograph of Frank Bridge, his mentor, who died some years before, but Britain always kept that photo displayed in his studio.